Y'all, good morning, Clawson. I'm going to be 100% honest. I realize that this is probably a little bit awkward for our church family because our church families never even went live. And so lots of other churches have done this before. We never have. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you. It's probably even more awkward for me. And uh, that's because I get to stand up here and preach to a whole group of people that is not here. Uh, So if you say amen, I don't get to hear the amen. And uh, it's going to be a little bit challenging for me. So I need you guys to send me some, some fun stuff during the message. Uh, We always started this series uh, in the midst of chaos and confusion. Our prayer and our hope is that Clawson would be the beacon of hope and and love and joy and and, uh, um, the example of Christ that we should be in our community. And I want to thank you guys for doing that because you are awesome and you continue and you continue and you continue to do that. So we were in this series, we dove into it last week and it's called 2020 Vision. And the whole series is uh, about Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. And here's what it says in the King James Version. It says, where there is no vision, y'all help me out, the people perish. One of the versions says where there is no vision, the people cast off hope. Y'all listen, it is so, so important to have the correct vision, to know where you're going, to understand and get where it is that you're going. When you don't have vision, you don't understand where you're going. The Bible says people perish, they cast off hope. So uh, for, we're going to give a little example of how important it is to have vision. Up here, I have the most valuable thing in America right now. I'm sure that you guessed it. It is toilet paper. Most valuable thing in America right now is toilet paper. You could probably take this this box of toilet paper and trade it for a new boat right now with the craziness of what's going on in our culture and our society. So we're going to play a game and I need someone from the audience. Oh yeah, I forgot we don't have an audience. Pastor Christian, come help me. Uh, So what's going to happen here is uh, Pastor Christian is going to have three things of toilet paper. Listen, be careful with that. That's very valuable. So I want you to stand behind this line right here. And in just a second, you're going to try to be a basketball all-star. You're going to try to be Michael Jordan and make it into this basket. And if, Christian, you make it all three times with those into this basket, you are going to get this entire box of toilet paper. But if you don't make it, then I'm going to take this box of toilet paper and I'm going to disperse it amongst our Clawson family. You guys are going to get some free toilet paper. So you actually want Christian to lose this game. Everybody say, Christian, lose the game. game. Okay, so Christian, would you say that you can see the basket pretty good? Okay, go ahead and shoot the first time. Let's see how good you are. That looked more like LeBron James than Michael Jordan, but uh, I mean, I'll, I'll go with you. Back up just a little bit. Let's go back to this thing right here. Okay, so can you still see it pretty good? You can see it pretty good. Okay, why don't you throw that one? Oh, y'all, we don't want Christian to win. So we're talking about the importance of vision and understanding, being able to see and look at where you're going. So Christian, really what we need to do is you need to make this third shot blindfolded. You think you can do that? Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, all right, guys, if you're watching, I need you to give a Christian, we need you to miss it for us to be able to have toilet paper. So, Christian, we're going to walk right up here, and then we're going to confuse you a little bit, let you come right back here. And then uh, we're going to stay. Uh, that's, that's probably, uh, let's go a little bit further right here. And uh, I need you, you, do you remember how far the basket was away? Yes. Okay. So, I need you to go ahead and make it in the basket. Yeah, from right there. You go ahead. It was close. It was close. Let's let's see how important let's see how important vision is. So the basket is over here, and your toilet paper is over there. That's good news for you guys because you get some free toilet paper this week. Everybody, stop by the church and you can grab a roll. It's going to be awesome. Thank you, Christian. Now, what Christian has shown us is the importance of having vision. The importance of knowing what you're shooting for. The importance of knowing what you're going after. Because if you can see and you know where you're going after, then you can make the shot. But if you cannot see and know where you're going, then you cannot make it. Everybody say amen. Amen. So Pastor Jordan said something last week that I thought was so, so good. And here's what he said, talking about vision. He said, vision comes from God. And it is the method by which we accomplish his mission. Think about that. Let that sink in real quick. That is so good. Vision comes from God. And it is the method by which what we accomplish his 
mission. Now, we went over this last week. Klaus and family, I need you to hear, to, 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 uh, I need you to speak up this morning. You're not here, so I need to hear you from your house. A lot of y'all live in Central. Y'all ready? So the vision of Clausen, help me out. What is Clausen's vision? Okay, my 12 people here help me out very, very well. Discover, connect, develop, expand. When we sat down and we began to seek God and ask him what he wanted us to do as a church, what he wanted our vision to be, where he wanted us to shoot, this is what we got from him. Discover Jesus Christ. Connect into the family of believers Develop as a Christ follower, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, and expand his kingdom into the entire earth. And in this series, what we're doing is we're helping you understand those steps. We're helping you see clearly what God has called not only us to do, but what he's called you to do. Because the cool thing about our vision is that just doesn't pertain to our church. That actually pertains to every human being. What has God called me to do? First of all, he's called me to discover Jesus Christ. He's called me to connect into his family. He's called me to develop and not just always be a baby Christian, but to develop into a mature Christ follower. And he has called me and you to expand his name and his kingdom around the world. So last week, Pastor Jordan tackled Discover, where he talked about discovering Jesus Christ. I'm going to be honest with you. Our home group got deeper than it has ever went before. Our home group was awesome last week. We tackled one of the points that he talked about. And, and the point that he talked about was there's a difference between knowing of Jesus and knowing Jesus. So big of a difference. Why is a part of our thing discover? Because there's a difference between knowing of Jesus and knowing Jesus. Most of the world knows of Jesus. But most of the world probably doesn't necessarily know Jesus. And what we have to do is know him, discover Jesus Christ. What we talked about in our home group is how Jesus, when he was talking about people that could not enter the kingdom of heaven, he said, depart from me, for I do not know you. Listen, if you're watching this morning, if you're here this morning, and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you don't know him with all of your heart and who you are, then you have to discover who he is. Somebody say amen. amen. And now for week two, step two of the vision, everybody say connect. connect. That was not very loud. Everybody say connect. connect. <clears throat> Listen, God has called us to connect into his family. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 24 and 25 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. It's tough today, right? Not neglect meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now in the day of his return is drawing near. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to try to go kind of deep into this subject of connecting. So some of you are probably sitting out there and you're like, what? He's going to talk about us not neglecting to meet together. Pastor's going to preach about us coming to church on the day that we can't come to church. How does that make any sense? So listen, let me, let me help you out. I'm not going to preach to you about coming to church. What I want to do is drive home to you what this scripture is actually talking about. Because I believe there's a big difference. Just like there's a big difference between knowing of Jesus and knowing Jesus, there's a big difference between just going to church and being connected into Jesus' family. Listen, that verse of scripture used words like this. Motivate one another. Acts of love. Good works towards each other. Encourage one another. Here's what it didn't say. It didn't say not, let us not neglect coming to a building and hanging out and, and coming in late and trying to not talk to as many people as you can and getting the worship service and leaving before the altar call so you don't actually have to talk to people. That is not what it's talking about. It's talking about being connected into a family so the family can be stronger and so that you can be stronger. Amen. Amen. Connect. The honest truth is, y'all, this building is not the church. Everybody always says, hey, let's go to church. Let's go to church. Let's go to church. This building is not actually the church. We are the church. So it doesn't matter if you're here this morning. It doesn't matter if you're at your home. It honestly doesn't matter where you are. The church right now is wherever we are because the Bible talks about his family, his children being his church. 
So it's not half as important that you come to church as what it is that you get connected into the church. When we connect in the family of Jesus Christ, when we get involved, when we get determined to do God's will for his church, even when all hell comes against the church, when all hell comes against the nation, even when we have to get quarantined and stay at home and we can't come to the church and we got to stay home and watch the church, we are still the church. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's said that we are a part of his family. That's so powerful. How do you treat your family? I want you to think about that real quick. When I go over to my family's house, how do I treat going to my family's house? Here's what I do. When I go to my family's house, I'm going to lay back and chill. I'm going to kick my feet up. I'm going to listen to all of Kevin Polk's jokes. Because you know if we have a family gathering, he's going to have jokes because he's going to learn new ones every day when he goes and sits or walks at the mall or whatever it is that he's doing. And so you got to listen to Kevin Polk jokes and then you chill out for a little while and then you go see how much ice cream they have in the freezer. If there's any snacks that you want to grab, why do you do that? You could, because it's your family. So you can take, you can, you can treat that house like it's your house because it is your house because your family. And so then you chill and you listen to the kids all fighting in the backyard and don't really do anything about it because it's family and all you're going to do is argue about whose kid is right and whose kid is wrong. So you, you just kind of chill out and let them fight. That's what you do when you're at your family's house, right? And so what if I was to show up at like some random person's house or even my family's house? What if I was to show up at my family's house and I didn't kick my feet up and I didn't go to the fridge and I didn't hang out and I didn't talk and I just kind of sat over in the back, stayed away from everyone and, and, and I didn't really talk to them. And then I came in after everyone ate and, and, and got the good stuff. And then I left before we started playing games. So I didn't get any kind of social environment. So I was just kind of in and out, didn't really have any kind of communication. Would you think that that family would believe that I was connected into their family? No. Why? Because I'm not connected into the family. I may have went and hung out at the same place that that family hung out, but I'm not actually connected into the family. John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, all who believe in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Y'all, that is so good. It says clearly in the Bible, we are children of of God. All of us in this room, all of us at your homes that are watching, if you have discovered Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are a child of God. And I can't help but think that it breaks our dad's heart when he looks down on his children and they are as divided as what his kids are. You have denominations that are against denominations. You have people in this church that are against people in that church. You have people inside each church that are against people in their own church. And I can't help but believe that when God looks down and he sees that we're not together, we're not connected together, we're not supporting each other, we're not working together, that it breaks his heart. Amen. That is not how he designed his family to be. We were designed to connect with each other. And if you're maybe sitting out there and you're skeptical, you're like, no, 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 that's not really my church. That's not how I want to do things. Let me, let me give you some of the word. Here we go. Let's start out with what happens when we connect. Now, this is biblical. What happens when we connect? Not when we come to church, but when we connect into the family. What happens when we connect? Number one, if you're taking notes at home, we become a part of a team. Anybody ever play any team sports? I love this. We become a part of a team. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 25 through 27 says this. It says, this makes for harmony among the members so that all members care for each other. So that all members what? Care. care for each other. Whoa. If one member, if one part suffers, all of the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all of the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Amen. Any of y'all ever watch a basketball team that has like really, really talented basketball players? Um... But when they get together as a team, for some reason, their talent does not show off very well. And they can get beat by a team with way less talent that plays better as a team. You ever notice that? It's crazy, y'all. My son, Kanan, he, uh, he has a great team, a great little team, very, very talented group of kids. But sometimes they play as a team and they are like rocket fire. I mean, they are boom, 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 boom. And they are dominating tournaments and games. And sometimes... 
even though they're probably some of the most talented kids on the court, they can go out and look like they don't have any idea how to play basketball. Y'all, it was so depressing. We went to this tournament. Uh, we we're playing in, in Huntington, and we lost to Cushing. Our team lost to Cushing. I didn't even know there was enough people in Cushing to make up a basketball team. Like, I thought it was just trees and cows. And we lost to Cushing, and I'm, I'm literally sitting in the bleachers going, how does that happen? How, how does this team that goes and plays in Houston all the time, and they're like really talented kids, how do they lose to that team? And here's how. Because when you become a part of a team and a team works together, maybe they may, may not be the most talented group of kids, but if they can mesh and have chemistry as a team, they can dominate. Amen. We are a team. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, let's be honest. Doing life on our own is not easy. Sometimes in this life we need encouragement. Sometimes in this life we need a little kick in the rear end. Amen. Sometimes in this life, y'all, <clears throat> we need a little shoulder yeah. to lean on. Help me out. Lean on me. Come on, y'all. When you're not strong. If you're in your home, I'll be your friend. Help me out, Jordan. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long and I'm going to need Somebody to lead. If we're being honest and truthful, every one of us in this room, every one of us at our homes, at different times in our life, we need that shoulder Amen. to lean on. Amen? If y'all like my singing, post up a, you know, a thumbs up. If you don't, just don't comment at all, and I won't worry about it. <laughs> Listen, I want to stop you right now, and I want you to think about something, okay? Everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. I want you to stop, and I want you to think about the people that sit around you at church right now, I want you to picture them in your mind. Who sits around you? Okay, now I want you to stop. And I want you to begin to picture somebody that sits on the complete opposite side of the church right now. Okay? Now I want you just to kind of take a helicopter view inside the church. And I want you to try to picture in your mind all the different people in our church. And here's what I want you to know. Think about this. You can, you can open your eyes this morning. That is your team. Amen. Those people are your team. These people that sit beside you are your team. The people on the other side of the church are your team. Every single person that is a part of the family of Jesus Christ is on your team. And here's what you need to know. If you're struggling, you're not struggling on your own. They're struggling too. And just like they need you to pick them up sometimes, you need them to pick you up sometimes. And that is what the family of Jesus does. Those times when you feel discouraged, like you want to quit because there's a crazy virus going, wrong, going around in, in our society. And there's this anxiety, this spirit of anxiety that's trying to take over. And all you want to do is just sit at home and, and eat gallons and gallons of ice cream. And then, of course, you need your toilet paper. For when you finish up all of the gallons of ice cream. <laughs> Listen, every one of our team, every one of our people in our family, in our church, they go through that too. When you want to make a difference and you decide to commit to make a difference and I'm going to rock the world for Jesus and I'm going to give him my all. And you go out and you try to do it by yourself and you begin to get down and discouraged. They do that too. So what do we do? We play as a team. We come together as a team. And when we come together as a team, you know what you do? Let me share with you what you do. You guys come together as a team this month. This past week, you came together as a team. I text and asked you guys to give money towards corona aid. And what did you do? You gave. You gave we gave over $4,000 right now for corona aid. You guys boxed up 80 boxes of food to go out to senior citizens' homes and, and to people's houses that are quarantined and they're hungry and they need food. You've given toilet paper away. You've given medicine away. You have come and boxed up the food. You've taken the food out to their homes because they're not coming out. You guys this week have been the hands and the feet of Jesus. And you know how you've done that? Because you've joined up with a team that says we are committing to make a difference for Jesus Christ. When you become a part of that family, there's power in becoming a part of that team. Listen, if you're trying to do life on your own and you act acting like everything's all together when it's really not, just stop. Why? 
Why would you want to do that when you got a team that's backing you up saying, I want to fight with you and I want to do life with you. I love how connected our church is. Listen, if you're out there and you're not, a lot of you text me this morning like, man, I hate that I'm not coming to the church. I hate that you're not coming too because I love you guys. I love how connected we are. My home group, we're like family. We tell each other stuff that we're not going to tell anybody else. I was talking to Jordan this week, and he was telling me all about the schools of discipleship, level one and level two, and how those, those people are coming together. They're growing together. They're moving forward together, just like family should. We were talking about how powerful our Sunday school classes have been lately. We've been talking about the food box ministry, Clawson Kids, Jam, Nursery, Clawson Youth, the team in the kitchen, women's groups, men's groups. When you have those groups together, Together, you have a powerhouse. I love how connected our church family is, and that's how God has called us to live. When I look at these teams and I look at these groups, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude because that is what family is supposed to look like. That is what He called His church to look like. When somebody in my group is celebrating, it's a party. And when somebody in my group is hurting and they need prayer, we're hurting and we're praying. That is what life in the family of Jesus looks like. Listen, I'll end this point with this. Can somebody grab me some water? I'll end this point with this. If you're not connected in some part of our family here, then you need to join the team. You need to join a team. You need to figure out where is it that God has called you to get connected, and you need to get connected and be a part of the team. All right, number two. What do we get when we get connected? When we get connected, number two, we grow. All right, here we go. Number two, we grow. Y'all, I have a, uh, now thinking about growing, I want you real quick to think about your life at Clawson. And I want you to answer this. How many of you, whether you're online or whether you're the few that are here, how many of you are involved and connected in some type of group at the church? Whether that's the worship team, the prayer team, the, uh, well, you're connected in a group. Okay, now next question would be, how many of you would say based off of your connection with that group, you see growth in your life? Maturity in your life. Every hand is lifted, probably at home. Everyone that is connecting is lifting your hand. Why? Because when you get connected into the body of Jesus Christ, you begin to grow. So, hey, I want to introduce you guys to a new friend of mine. Everybody say, what's up, Philip? Come on, Phil, come join me. Y'all, this is Philip. Philip uh, just started my home group two weeks ago, and so I've really got to know him um, throughout the last couple of weeks. We uh, tried to dominate the other day on the volleyball court, and it didn't go as planned. So tonight we're going to dominate together Woo! on the volleyball court. Ain't that right? Yeah. So, hey, so Philip, I got a couple of questions I want to ask you. Um, question number one. Here, let me check. Question number one is um, I, I want to ask how long... Have you been attempting to, to really dive into and mature and grow in your walk with Jesus Christ? Uh, I'm going to say it's probably been about three months that I've, since I've attended Clawson. Oh, sorry. It's been about three months since I've attended Clawson. Uh, I really dove in. I started really walking with Jesus Christ, uh, my Savior. And uh, not saying that I didn't know who Jesus was. Uh, you know, I was baptized at an early age. I uh, went to church as a teenager periodically. You know, and uh, just really never knew what Jesus had for me. Dude, that is awesome. Y'all give it up for Philip. That's awesome. So he's been running after God real hardcore for about three months. Next question would be, what steps have you taken to, um, uh, to get connected into the, into the family of Jesus Christ? Well, uh, I come to Sunday service as much as I can every Sunday. Uh, unless we're quarantined, of course. Of course. And unless I text him and tell I'm him to come. I'm still here. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, after our Sunday services, I signed up for our SOD class. It's a school of discipleship. Uh, it helps you become a leader of, for God. Uh, it helps you become a better husband, a uh, better dad. Uh, just uh, I do my Wednesday night, Wednesday night services. Uh, I love doing that because I love doing my study throughout the week. And in the middle of the week, I might have questions for my pastor or uh, just for everybody's advice. Uh, we like to connect uh, with each other and just uh be able to, you know, give each other our advice. And then, of course, you joined the best thing. And, of course, I joined our home group, which is Pastor Josh. We have a bunch of home groups. That's true. That everybody can, you know, for every group. I see some of them over there. But uh, we just like to get together, get to know each other, uh, pray for each other. We also eat, play games, have a lot of fun. Uh, it's really cool. If you ain't tried it, you need to try it. Don't knock it till you try it. 
Uh, there you go. It's really awesome. Well, hey, y'all, let's do this. First of all, y'all need to give it up for Philip because he is just <laughs> dove into his life with Jesus. Can I pray for you, dude? Yes, please. All right, would y'all press your hands this way? And I just want to pray for my brother, Heavenly Father. I thank you, God for everything that you've been doing in his life. I thank you that you're developing him as a father, as a, as a husband, God, as a man of God. And I pray that you would continue to move in his life as he's testifying to everything that you're doing in his life. Continue to move in his life. Continue to strengthen him as he continues to get connected, grow him and move him closer to you. And Lord, I love you and thank you and praise you. In your precious name I pray, amen. Amen. Love you, bro. Love you, brother. Yes, sir. We all, so I cannot stress to you how important it is for you to get connected into Jesus' family. Now listen to this scripture. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, He makes the whole body. He makes. Everybody say he makes. He makes, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. I love that. And then it says, as each part does its own special work, it helps make the other parts. Help me out grow as each part does its special work, as each piece of the family does what they're called to do and what God has led them to do, then what the Bible says is it helps the other parts of the family to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Now, for some people that may come to Clawson and, and, and maybe they've never been a part of a church that, that does things the way that we do them, you might go... Man, that church just really, they just want to get together and have fun. They, they get, they're so connected because they just like, they want to play volleyball and they want to play cars and they want to, the pastor's going to sing on the stage and do crazy stuff. And they just want to get together and have fun. Or maybe you come to our church and at our church we like to eat. And so uh, uh, Lufkin Barbecue is the, the best. They, they help us out in so many different ways. Uh, but uh, listen, we like to eat. And so you may come to closet and it may be one of those times where, where everybody's eating together. And you go, well, that, that church, they just want to get together and eat. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I like to have fun. And I like to get together and eat. But that is not why we're connected. We're connected because when we connect together, we grow together. We become stronger Christians and mature in our faith. That is what the Word of God says. Listen, as you connect with other believers, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. What does that mean? That means they push you to become better. They hold you accountable. They make sure you're on the right track. They teach you things that you couldn't have found out on your own. They encourage and sometimes force you to grow Amen. because of your relationship with them. Now, as we're talking and as we're thinking about connecting and growing, I have a challenge that I want to give you real quick. You can write this down. And the challenge is as we grow throughout this month, uh, starting March 28th, I want to invite you to do a 21-day fast with me. Invite you to do a fast with me through the Easter season. We're going to do a fast together. And um, some of you may be sitting there going, what in the world is a fast? Listen, a fa fasting is essentially giving up food or something else for a period of time. Listen, this is so powerful. In order to focus your thoughts on God, to get closer to him, and to build and strengthen yourself spiritually. So what we're doing is we are doing a 21-day fast together. And if you're sitting here and you're like, I want to join in and get connected with the family spiritually, this is a great way to get connected spiritually uh, is to fast with us. And we're going to pray for the world that we're living in. We're going to pray that people would, get, would discover Jesus, connect into his body. We're going to pray that his name is, is expanded around the world. We're going to pray for those things throughout this fast. And so if you want to come together and connect with us and grow, I challenge you. After service this morning... Um, our spiritual life director is going to post on Facebook um, a, a little thing to help you with fasting, help you with understanding fasting and, and what it looks like to fast. You can do all kinds of fasts. You can do a Daniel fast. You can do my dad one time fasted Dr. Pepper for a year and he felt like that was a big give up for me, Dr. Pepper, you know, whatever, it's okay. Uh, but for him, that was a big deal to fast Dr. Pepper for a year because he wanted to, to do some spiritual growing. And so for you, maybe it's social media. Now, I don't encourage you right now to fast social media because you're going to miss church. But, and maybe right after that, when we start coming back to church, maybe it's a social, maybe you're addicted to social media and you fast every day but Sunday and then you come to church on Sunday. Whatever that looks like for you, here's what I want you to understand. When you connect, you strengthen the team, you become a part of the team, and you grow. Now for the end of this message, I want to kind of flip the script and I want us to talk about what happens when we avoid connecting. Because I think there's so many people, just like there's so many people 
that know of Jesus, yet they don't know Jesus. There's so many people that come to church and yet they're not connected into his family. And so let's flip the script real quick. What happens when we avoid, when we don't connect? Number one, and this is all biblical, number one, we are weakened. This is not my opinion. This is 100% out of scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12 says this. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Listen, y'all, there is power in numbers. There is power in being connected. And if you choose to do life on your own, that is your choice. But you need to understand you're weakened because of that choice. Anybody ever remember worrying, um, moving from junior high to high school, eighth grade, to being a freshman? Did anybody ever remember worrying about, like, if you were going to be bullied by the bullies in school? Uh, I, it's, it's, it's really funny to me. My, my oldest son this year is going to be moving, well, this next year is going to be moving from eighth grade to being a freshman. So some of that discussion has been talked about a little bit in, in our house. What does it look like? You know, all that kind of thing. And uh, Kanan mostly has been talking about it. If you play sports, there's going to be some bullying. Uh, it just happens. It happens all the time. It's horrible. It's of the devil, but it, it happens. Uh, so what happens is if you, um, you know, there's this crazy, crazy thing. Bullying happens, okay? But there's a group of people that almost never gets bullied. And that is the people that have a big macho older brother. Anybody ever had a big macho over older brother? Me neither. I had an older brother, but he was not big and macho. And I think when I was a freshman and he was a senior, I was bigger than he was. But I did have friends that have big macho older brothers. And what happens is when they become a freshman, the big bullies that think about bullying the different people, they're not going to mess with this freshman. Why are they not going to mess with this freshman? It's not because they're scared of the freshman. I promise you that. It's because they know that if they mess with the freshman, then they're going to have to mess with the linebacker. And if they mess with the linebacker, they're going to have to mess with the rest of the football team. And so if they bully this guy, then what happens is all hell comes against them with the big boys to come against. What, what happens is there's power in those numbers. So listen to me, church. Listen to me this morning. You guys at home, listen to me. Here's what I want you to know. Think about this. When you're connected to the family of believers, you have a team full of linebackers. And when Satan come against you and he wants to attack you and he wants to discourage you and he wants your anxiety to be high, what happens is when you come to your brothers and your sisters in Christ, they begin to fight for you. They begin to go to war for you. They begin to pray for you and send you encouraging messages. And they begin to be that protective big brother that you need. When you're in the family of Jesus Christ, when we're connected, y'all, we got the big boys on our side. Amen. When you're in the, the family of Jesus, but when you're standing by your lonesome with no, no team, you're bully bait. They're coming after you. The enemy looks and says, oh, that one's all by themselves. They're not connected into the family. They just got saved or whatever it is. I'm going, and when I hit them, their faith is going to fall to pieces. And you know what? We see that happen over and over and over again with people that don't get connected into his family, into his body. Um, it says right there in the scripture that we read, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back. Three are even better. When you get a whole team of people that are praying for you, that are fasting with you, that are fighting with you, it's like spiritually you have this, this, just, this, this overwhelming spirit that's encouraging and building and lifting you up. Number two, finally, when we don't get connected, when we don't get connected, we're disobeying God. Ugh. That's tough. Nobody ever wants to say, hey, you're disobeying God. But honestly, the truth is, when you're not connected, you're disobeying God. And I know that hurts. That's hard. That's why I saved it till the end, because I'm about to be done. <laughs> but the truth is, God's told us to get connected into his family. And he knew 
why we needed to be connected into his family. All of these scriptures that we've been, we've been reading, don't neglect meeting together. A person standing alone can be defeated. He makes the body fit together perfectly. If one part suffers, all of the parts suffer with it. We were designed to be connected. Mark chapter 3, verses 24 and 25 says, If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. All of these scriptures that we've looked at today points to the fact that God is clearly telling us that he wants his people to be together, that he wants us to be unified, that he never wants us to be divided or stand alone. He wants us to connect. From the beginning of time, God has showed us the importance of connecting with other people. When, he, when, when creation, it says God created Adam, then he looked down at Adam and he said, this is not good that man would be alone. So he created a woman and all the men said, amen. amen. He created a helper. He created somebody that would help him and strengthen him and empower him. So that he wouldn't be alone. Listen, all through the Bible, when Moses was afraid to lead the Israelites, what did God do? He sent him a helper. His name was Aaron. Amen? Listen, when Esther, when when Naomi uprooted from her homeland, she had Ruth by her side. When Paul went on his missionary journeys, he had Barnabas and John Mark. When the early church first started, and it says that Romans were killing all of the Christians, it says that they came together and they met together in homes. Why did they do that? Because there's power. When God's people meet and come together and connect together, there's power that he releases into that group and into those people. Listen, our churches today are so divided. God's people are so divided. It's so competitive. There's millions and millions of believers. And it seems like just a handful of them are connected together. Our vision here at Clawson is to be different. Our vision is to do what God told us to do and to connect together. Why? Because when we connect together, we're part of his team, we're part of his family, and we grow. And when we don't connect together, then first of all, we're weakened. And second of all, we're out of God's will because he's told us to connect together. My mad Clawson challenge for you during this time of quarantine And during this time of uncertainty and during this time where you're not able to come and be with us at church is to stay connected. First of all, you stay connected to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he's the vine and we're the branches. And as you stay connected to Jesus Christ, he continues to flow the health and the things that you need into your life. And secondly, stay connected to your family. This church is your family. If you want this church to be your family, you can go ahead and get connected in even without coming up to the church. Stay connected to Jesus and stay connected to his church. And you'll be strong and you'll grow through this time, tough, tough time that we're living in. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Heavenly Father, I love you so much. God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, God, that you've called us to be connected as a people. Lord, I pray that you would help us through this time to connect together, to strengthen each other, to help each other grow in the time that we're in. And Lord, I love you and thank you and praise you. In your precious name I pray, amen. Listen, to end our service this morning, I want to ask Pastor Jordan to come and he's going to close us out. Uh, God bless you. Hope to see you Wednesday night uh, on Facebook Live. Hey, good morning, Claus. And first off, could we just give a quick round of applause to our Lord and to Pastor Josh for that message right there. Amen. Now, for those of you in your homes, God is watching, and you better have clapped right then. And if you didn't, go ahead and clap right now because, you know, he's, he's got his eyes on you. Hey, y'all, so, you know, we're not here in service, and we can't come up and have one of our awesome altar calls that we love so dearly. But that doesn't mean we can't pray. And it doesn't mean we can't learn and discuss. So we have a challenge for you. You know this is Claus, and we're not going to let you off the hook easy. We want to challenge you guys real quick. Whoever you're with, even if maybe you're by yourself or if you've got your family or some friends with you, we want to ask you, as this video comes to an end, to get together and to pray with each other. If you really want to take it the extra mile and get a little gold star by your name, y'all, we want to encourage you to look up 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. 
I'll say that again. It's 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 17. Read that together as a group. It's all about unity and the importance of connection as, as a family of, of believers. And so read those scriptures, discuss them with each other, and pray together as we end out this service, y'all. And then finally, if you just want to go another extra mile, please do. If you're on Facebook, give us a quick comment. Let us know what you thought about the service. Maybe tell us how your discussion went as you read those scriptures together. And then just don't forget, y'all, Wednesday at 6.30, we'll do this again with our Bible study. And next Sunday morning, we will be right back here with another awesome live service. Invite a couple of your friends to watch, and we're believing we'll have even more next next week watching than this week. Let's dismiss. Y'all read your Bibles together. Pray. End it out with a good discussion. And I'm, I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes one more time. Tend out in dismissal. God, we love you. Help us to connect together. God, as we discuss and as we read this word and as we pray together in our homes with our families or our friends, I just pray that you would anoint this time of discussion. Help us not, God, to let all of this be in vain and, and to not apply it to our lives, but rather let it stick with us so that we carry it forward into our day-to-day -day lives. Continue to keep us safe. Continue to watch over our nation. Help us to connect together, God. And we are believing that throughout this, you will bring us closer than ever before. In the mighty, beautiful name of Jesus, we pray everyone said, amen. God bless y'all. We will see you soon.